the cultural factor clang again. Japan is a, is a perfect example of the reach of American culture. You see in all the Godzilla movies, right? And there's always this like kid with a Yankees cap. And that is how we actually conquered Japan. It wasn't it wasn't MacArthur, it was like it was American culture, popular culture. Which consists of uh, three things in particular. There is music, there's fashion, there is the movies, and most importantly of all, on top of all these things, the language of aviation which is the thing that binds the whole world together. The language of aviation is English. We saw a thing not long ago um, where somebody uh, captures uh, a jihadist. And they say, do you speak English? And he says, uh, everybody speaks some English. And that, you know, that's the deal. We are the language of the world. And the idea of uh, music and uh, fashion is important because that's part of the language of the world, which we own. We are the language of the world. Our jeans, our t-shirts. Funny thing. <laughs> they, keep, uh, they keep doing these things about uh, lost tribes of the Amazon, I think. You know, we get like like aerial photos of these tribes that are, are like unaffected, uh, uninfected by American or other influence, and they're all wearing T-shirts. <laughs> we invented the T-shirt, which is now the standard cheap thing that everybody can have. Apparently, um, even the uh, Stone Age tribes of the Amazon. Uh, have women who do not wish to be bare-breasted all the time. <laughs> so, what does this mean? It means that uh, I've been trying to find the uh, Tiananmen Square thing, and I, I confess I failed because it didn't work hard enough. I'm guessing that the guy who stood down the tank was actually wearing American blue jeans. It's what the Soviets wanted. Yeah, all these kids who finally brought down the Soviet Empire, um, were, they were wearing jeans. American jeans. Well, maybe not made in America, but, you know, they wanted, they wanted to have our jeans. They wanted to have our freedom. They wanted to hear the Stones. They wanted to hear, well, God knows why, the Beatles. And they, they, they did everything they could. So, this is the world that we're looking at now, which includes places that we like didn't actually conquer, like uh, Singapore. You've got like American pop culture out there, and all these people that, uh, I and mean, even members of the popular culture that say, "Oh no, we don't like America." They're they're America. They're they're there. And see that that's that's the beauty of it. It's like we are America, we are everywhere, and we are seditious everywhere. You don't have to listen to your parents, you know, you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to do anything except like be free. And we had a hand in setting up all these parliamentary democracies. And it's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who are you? We are the new uh, 
new whatever, like revolutionaries. Okay, great. And all we did was like say, hey, guess what? You get to be who you want to be. This is the idea that has spread from America to the rest of the world. It's, it's been a it's been amazing uh, to uh, both of us, my wife and me, watching uh, movies from uh, and TV series from South, South Korea. These are people who are like so regimented, you know, so, so steeped in the old Asian ways. And it's, and what you're looking at when you look at all their their stuff, it's it's uh, they are like fighting, fighting. To be free at, at every level at every level of society that wouldn't have happened I met a guy uh, who worked for the uh, Boston Herald Tribune and I think this uh, like speaks to the uh, depth of the reach of American exceptionalism because we were playing pool late at night, and uh, <coughs> we were both drunk, so you know, figure, I'll calculate that in. And uh, he had actually been in the Korean War, which I know most of you know nothing about. And he was uh, he was an interrogator for the uh, South Korean uh, army. And he told me. I'm recoiling in horror from what he's telling me, actually. I mean, it's, here's a guy I'm playing pool with, I'm, I'm drinking with, and he said, this is what we used to do. He said, we would like uh, trickle water on their faces in the uh, Korean winter, and then the, uh, the, uh, the ice would like close their noses, and then they would tell us anything. Uh, in other words, he's talking about like waterboarding in South Korea in winter, right? I said, how could you, how could you do that? He said, it is our way. We kill our enemies. I said, and that, you see, that is what, uh, that is what, scared us about you, the Americans. I said, scared? How? And he said, it's this whole idea of uh, leaving no man behind. Really? Yes. Yes. That was the thing that scared us. And it's not, it's not, it's not a slogan. It is the truth. When there is an American soldier down, American troops will do anything to get him back. That is what scared us. Because you are completely different from us, and we will never win against that kind of thing. So... America never leaves a man behind. That was, that was the old and ancient rule that allowed us to conquer the world. We will always be there. We will always come back for our own. And that is the thing that has galvanized the world. It's like no man, no man is ever going to be left behind. That's why the t-shirts, that's why the music, it's like, yeah, yeah, they're all like uh, they're crazy crap, whatever. <laughs> this is the nation that never leaves anybody behind. That is how we conquered the world and nobody else in all recorded human history has ever been like that. Because if you don't leave one person behind, you don't leave any nation behind either. 
So, <coughs> what does renewal of the Monroe Doctrine mean? It means, okay, we are going to leave you to sort it out for yourselves, but we still control the popular culture. We give you, <laughs> we give you what we give you. We give you Beyonce. And you can see that there is another way to live. Therefore, you can all live the way you want to. Which is why, you know, the Hong Kong uprising is an American uprising. Who, who would think that like Hong Kong could stand up against Red China? Well, Apparently, all the people who uh, like learn from American uh, capitalism, who learn from American popular culture, yeah, you can like you can say, "We'll be in the streets. Look for us there. We'll be there, and we will. In the end, we will win." <laughs>